Hi, I'm Dan Corwin. I'm one of the ER physicians and concussion researchers at CHA, and today we're going to be demonstrating the complex tandem gait. So this is a test of gait and balance that we use as part of a larger battery of tests, which include eye tracking and vision testing, to diagnose a concussion following a head injury in children. These tests were initially developed in the sports medicine world, but we've shown that they're applicable to a wide variety of settings, including the primary care setting and the emergency department setting where I practice. All right, so when I introduce this to our patients, I'll say, I'm now gonna ask you to walk with one foot in front of the other, like you're walking on a balance beam or a tightrope. So walk with one foot in front of the other, like you're walking on a balance beam or tightrope, and our eyes are open for these first five steps. And again, we're watching her hands and we're watching for sway. And after those five steps, I'm gonna have Rebecca close her eyes take five additional steps, and closing her eyes takes away visual cues, so it makes the test a little harder. And we'll stop her there. So at this point, I'll have Rebecca open her eyes and start walking backwards. And before she does that, I will note that walking backwards with her eyes open is easier for children than walking forward with their eyes closed. So you're less likely to see any errors or sway on this portion than you are in the forward eyes closed portion. So we'll now do five steps backwards with Rebecca's eyes open. And again, her hands are staying at her side. She's not at the side. She's not having any steps off that straight line. And then I'll stop her, and for the last portion, we'll have her close her eyes, and she'll walk backwards with her eyes closed for five steps. This is the hardest part of the test, so the test we're most likely to see errors on. So five steps backwards. Also stand next to children as they're doing this to make sure they're not falling. Perfect. And she's able to do that five steps backwards with her hands at her sides and not stepping off the line. In terms of grading that test, we don't have a, a scale, a 0 to 10 or 0 to 20 scale to give Rebecca a number, but generally the more errors, the more sway she has on the test, the more likely it is that that's pathology rather than her normal. Um, the test is easy to hard as we're going, so the first portion of the test, walking forward with eyes open, is the easiest. So if a child has errors or sway there, it's much more likely that they have a concussion and that's abnormal. When we get to the backwards eyes closed portion of the test, as the hardest portion of the test, if they are able to do that without any errors or sway, it is unlikely they have a concussion. However, about 20% of our normal non-concussed kids will have an error on that backwards eyes closed portion. So this isn't a perfect discriminatory test. Um, we use it in conjunction with the remaining tests of our battery, so the eye tracking, the gaze stability, uh, and the vision testing. But we have found in a recent study that this balance test, compared to a more sophisticated device-based balance test, is actually more sensitive at distinguishing concussed from non-concussed kids.